toiled diligently overseas for 13 years to provide for my family, came back to discover my wife's long-term infidelity endorsed by my own mother. I am at a loss for words, the realization that my wife no longer desires to reside with me is so upsetting that I will not even know where to begin. The most awful aspect is that she is not providing any explanation for that. The fact that she does not wish to move in with me is something that my mother is encouraging her to do. Please allow me to provide some context, I am 51 meters tall. Because of my job, I had to leave my hometown 13 years ago, and I left behind my wife, Mona, who is 48 years old, and our two children in the state of Texas. At this point, the children are 23 and 21 years old, they have both relocated to Houston and are currently maintaining their independence. Our company was one of thousands that went bankrupt overnight during the Great Recession, which occurred in the United States of America 13 to 14 years ago as a result the housing bubble. My father had passed away, and I was in charge of the construction company that he had owned. And then everything was thrown into disarray. My mother, my two children who were enrolled in school, and my wife were all responsibilities that I was responsible for, and it was simply too much for me to handle in an unsteady environment. As a result of exhausting all of my cash and other resources, I was forced to make the difficult choice of leaving the neighborhood. Following a series of unsuccessful attempts in a number of Asian nations, I was finally successful in establishing my company in Dubai. Despite the fact that it was a challenging period, I was able to persevere through all of the challenges because I was driven to create a wonderful lifestyle for my family. Following my departure from Texas, I did not return to my home state for over a year until I was finally able to step foot in my new endeavor. Once every five to six months, I would go back to my hometown. Although I wanted to bring my family here, Mona and the children did not want their school schedule to be disrupted, so I ultimately decided against it. My youngest daughter graduated from college and was able to secure a position at the business that her sister owned and operated. I went ahead and made arrangements for my vacation home so that I could spend some time with her before she took off. In the course of that visit, I requested that Mona relocate here with me on account of the fact that both of the children have moved out. However, she disputed it, stating that my mother would be left there by herself. It was my suggestion that mom may also come along with us, but neither of them were enthusiastic about the prospect leaving their hometown. They were justified in their decision to avoid moving to a new country that had such a distinct culture, and they were right in their decision. I didn't press the issue any further because the culture of the Middle East is extremely different from our own. In the course of my most recent trip back to Texas, I informed Mona that I intended to finish off my business in Dubai and then relocate back to Texas. I had anticipated that this would be a momentous occasion for her, but it was not. Response was everything but pleasant. I asked her if she did not want us to be living together, and she responded that she did not. I'm happy just that you work so hard to establish yourself there, so why do you want to leave everything and come back? She was correct in the sense that it was not an easy decision to shut down things that required a great deal of sacrifice to build, and it might not be a good choice. The trouble is, however, that I have been living away for 13 years, and now that my primary responsibility, which was the education of my children, was finished, I desired to relocate back to my hometown, which is where I feel most at ease. In the same manner that I have been handling our funds, I gave her my word that I will continue to do so. Now that the economy of the country has taken a turn for the better, I had intended to establish something in the state of Texas. There was still a lack of conviction on her part, this was a warning sign for me. However, I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. My mother paid me a visit the following morning, and unexpectedly, she advised me that I should not be making such a hurried choice to relocate back to my hometown. It was Mona who would have been the one to inform her about my plan because I had not disclosed it to her or anybody else. The same time that Mona's resistance to this may be interpreted as a warning sign, I was taken aback. When my mother also voiced a concern that was comparable to mine, I found myself experiencing feelings of self-doubt. Me that perhaps I was making the incorrect choice, so I decided to abandon that concept. Fact that my wife did not wish to reside with me was something that was upsetting me. There is a possibility that the reason could make sense, but the fact that Mona had become so emotionally detached from me was truly heartbreaking to me. I was so preoccupied with this sensation that, once I got back to my house, I cut back on the number of phone calls and texts I exchanged with her. I was under the impression that she would take notice of it and inquire about it, but she did not bother to inquire about whether or not everything was well. During certain periods of time, I did not call her, and she did not get in touch with me either. 
as the days turned into weeks, our communication has become limited to merely transactional level. One thing was clear from all of these, she was no longer in need of my assistance. Therefore, I approached her about a month ago. I questioned her about whether or not she still loved me. She dismissed it, claiming that I was simply overthinking the situation. She stated that she is only focused on taking care of the house and my mother, who has become more vulnerable as she has gotten older. In response, I was at a loss for words. Situation in which your wife is able to form such a strong bond with their mill and take care of them is not something that happens very often. Was thankful to Mona for the kindness that she showed to my mother. Passing day, my sense of unease continues to intensify. The question of why my wife would not want to be with me is one that I am unable to answer with any degree of comprehension. Not only do we already have our own house, but we have also completed all of our key duties. In addition to this, I am assuring her that our way of life will not be altered in any way. Because of this, it is not clear why she does not want me to come home. Indeed, just as you are all thinking, the same thought occurred to me as well, perhaps she had met someone more suitable for her marriage. On the other hand, the question is, how can I discover the truth? To this point, she has not displayed any additional warning signs. The children had been raised with such bravery by her in my absence, and she had been a wonderful mother. Is never simple. Performed each of her roles in such a graceful manner. There are moments when I feel guilty for having suspicions about her, but you are aware of how long distance works. Any suggestions on how to find out this information? Recent developments asterisk. I appreciate all of the suggestions. It made me happy to engage in conversation with those of you who shared your experiences of being betrayed. Valuable lesson to be learned. My mother was aware of the fact that Mona had been cheating on me for what seemed like an eternity, but she chose to keep it a secret from me. I am at a loss to explain what I did to deserve this outcome. Putting my experience up on this platform and making connections with you all made one thing quite clear, I cannot allow this to go unnoticed. I had unexpectedly booked a trip back home. I did not disclose this information to anyone, not even my mother. Upon entering my home, I dreaded the possibility of coming face to face with Mona and her companion in the affair. Fact that I had read a great number of accounts of ladies whose husbands were deployed and who cheated on them, this particular account was the one that sprang to my mind. I am relieved to report that nothing of the such occurred. I used the spare key to enter the house, and Mona was in the kitchen right at that moment. Indeed, she was taken aback when she saw me. In order to conceal the fact that I was a surprise, I brought a bouquet with me. It was clear that she was taken aback, but what's more, she was suspicious of my sudden entrance. Appearance, she pounded me with questions on my appearance. I informed her that I had a very modest workload that month, and as a result, I made the decision to return home. She put on a phony smile and tried to be joyful, but it was obvious that she was not authentically happy. For the following two weeks, I focused my efforts on uncovering the truth. I am not particularly proud of some of the things that I did but it is obvious that I had no choice but to do everything that a person in my situation would have done. Without her knowledge, I was able to gain access to her phone, listen in on her conversations, install a GPS device on her vehicle, and follow her around the city. As a result of all of this, information was delivered to me in fragments, which provided me with a comprehensive understanding of what was taking place while my absence at home. The fact that she had been seeing someone for the past eight years was revealed to the public. Upon my arrival at home, she displayed a high level of caution with regard to her phone. In the past, she would clear all of the evidence before I came, but, she did not have the opportunity to do so with this particular instance. It was the very first day that I attempted to snoop into her phone, but I was unsuccessful with my attempt. Moreover, when I was at last able to gain access to it, I discovered nothing. It's possible that she fixed it the moment she had the opportunity to do so. After placing a GPS device inside her vehicle and following her whenever she went, I discovered that she had been cheating on me. When I saw her entering a hardware store, I didn't initially have any suspicions about what she might be doing. However, when I was waiting outside for her to come back, I noticed that the proprietor had completely shut down his business and turned down the shutters. The sight of that made me feel unsteady. After a couple of hours, I observed her leave the business, and the proprietor opened the shutter after her vehicle had left the driveway following her departure. I had the intention of going inside the business to meet the AP myself, but I refrained from doing so because I was afraid that the AP may identify me and therefore spoil my carefully crafted plan. The following time she came to visit, 
I waited for her to arrive so that I could catch them in the act. She had a habit of going outside in the afternoon in the same way every day. Sometimes she would come to see my mother, and she would sometimes bring her friends or her parents with her. While I was waiting for her to meet AP, I doggedly followed her around everywhere she went. At long last, she made her way to meet my mother yesterday. On those days, I would typically retreat and stop following her further. I would not follow her further. Because of this, it took me a very long time to catch her. On the other hand, I continued to wait there yesterday and discovered that they were leaving the house together. Nothing about it seemed strange to me at all. I was under the impression that they were going to go shopping or do something else. Despite the fact that I did not want to follow them, I nevertheless did so for some reason. As soon as they pulled over to that hardware store, my stomach dropped and my heart fell. My mother and Mona were both met by AP when he emerged the door. Both of them exited the vehicle. It was right in front of my mother that AP kissed Mona. AP gave his mother a hug after they had been talking for a few minutes, and then she sat down inside the car and drove away. Soon as AP and Mona entered his shop, he moved the shutters to the lower position. Not believe what I was seeing. Thing, but the betrayal you received from your own mother is something that is beyond your ability to comprehend. The reality made me feel as though I was being suffocated to the point where I needed to take a few minutes to stroll down the walkway in order to catch my breath. Following some time, I went to the store and knocked on the door. You did not respond to it. When AP finally opened the door, I knocked on it with great force. When I asked him, where is Mona, he became still. I shoved him out of the way and fought my way inside the store. Hear a weak voice coming from the storage area before the lights went out. This occurred he had a chance to react. Discover my wife reclining in a reclined position, rubbing herself, and groaning for assistance and dragged me out of the storeroom while Mona screamed at the top of her lungs. This happened for a fraction of a second before AP pounced on me. Considering how hectic the situation was at the time, it took me some time to comprehend what was going on. In order to liberate myself, I punched AP, point, Mona emerged from the storage facility while concealing her identity. Asked her how long it was, I grabbed her. By the neck. AP made an attempt to rescuing her, but Mona prevented him from doing so was then that she began to cry and begged us to talk about this matter at home. Soon as I understood that I could potentially go into problems for this altercation, I distanced myself, went outside, and drove away. To my mother's place. I barged inside the house, shouting, You knew it. You knew it. You also betrayed me. Mona had already called her because mom didn't act surprised by my behavior. She just cried and held my hand, asking me to calm down. I broke down. Mona also arrived by then. Seeing her face made me angrier. I asked them to tell me the truth. After a lot of nudging, Mona said, it was very lonely when you left. Living on one's own for 13 years is not an easy task. It was difficult for you to find time for me because you were so preoccupied with your career. It was more of a status check call on the children and mom, and your calls were restricted for a few minutes. Thank you for your communication. What about me, then, asked her how long this had been going on, and she said, it could have been anywhere from seven to eight years. Holy cow! I was such an idiot. I had been working my tail off for those years in a foreign country so that my family could have a good life, and this was what they were doing. I asked her, why didn't you divorce me if there was so much disconnect between us? She broke down once more and spoke the words, I love you. Never in my life did I want to be apart from you. Spending time with AP was solely for the purpose of relieving stress and putting a stop to my feelings of isolation, nothing else. I looked at my mother and asked her, how had I wronged you to deserve this betrayal from her? After fooling around with him for a decade, he doesn't mean anything to her. Wow. How could I have done something to deserve this betrayal from her, while she was crying, she remarked, I know you despise me, but try to see things from my point. Of view. You abandoned me in this corner. It was Mona who was looking after me. She is a woman, and she has needs as well. Given that I am aware of that, I felt compelled to back her. After I had received all of my responses, I said, support her in betraying me. I got up to leave. They both tried to stop me and followed me outside, but I warned them not to. I told Mona not to come home, and I want to be alone for a while. I drove back home, sulking. I'm feeling sick in my stomach. I don't know how I should react to this. Is this affair really my fault? 
that I was wandering in a foreign country for my family's sake. Update to you guys, you have been a great support. Thanks. This is what happened next, I spent the next few days immersed in my sorrows. Then I drove to Houston to meet my daughters. They were not kids, they deserved to know what their mom was up to when I was busy providing for them. I did this also to safeguard myself. My plan was to leave the country, and Mona could use that against me to manipulate my daughters. They were shattered to know the truth, but the elder one also said that sometimes she felt Mona and my mom were definitely up to something. She also said that she suspected my mom of seeing a widower who lived two blocks away. Anyways, that's not my problem. My dad had passed away decades ago, so she could do whatever she wanted, but she's supporting Mona and all this is a problem for me. The next day, I packed my stuff and came back. Mona and mom had been calling me since then. I think they came home to find an empty house, and that's when reality hit them. Yeah, I abandoned them for the initial one month. The calls and texts were filled with stories and pleadings, asking me to return home. But eventually, they got concerned about the money. I had not blocked them deliberately. I wanted to see them getting anxious without money. I froze my bank accounts and credit card. They lost their marbles with that. It was obvious because neither of them had any source of income. Mom was on a state pension, but it wasn't enough to cover the lifestyle they have been leading. They are desperately trying all means to get a response from me, but I have ghosted them. Mom has resorted to emotional blackmail, saying, That dad would have been so heartbroken to see that I have left her alone in this old age. All their pleas are falling on deaf ears. They have betrayed me so badly. I never suspected Mona of anything. I never checked her phone, like people in long-distance relationships do, but I always respected her privacy more than Mona. I feel betrayed by mom. Sometimes, when I had a dizzy feeling about Mona, seeing her strong bond with mom made me feel lighter. In return, I get cheated upon. The reason they used to cover up Mona's cheating was so lame. Like she was lonely, hence she decided to open her legs. She was feeling alone in her own house with children surrounded by friends and family. Wow, if you compare it that way, I was a loner, literally alone in a foreign land with no family or friends. I could have also brought someone inside my bed, but the difference is I didn't. I was so busy thinking about the well-being of my family that fooling around was the last thing that came to my mind. I was working hard, saving up so that I could move back home as soon as possible. When none of their advances got a response from me, they reached out to my daughters for help. Mona didn't know that I had told the truth to the girls, and she did exactly what I had expected. Mona badmouthed me in front of them, saying that I had financially cut them off. She also alleged that I was having an affair in the Gulf or maybe had married someone here. After listening to all her BS, my girls gave her back and told her that they knew the truth about her affair. They chased her away that day, but Mona has been reaching out to the younger one, asking for help. The younger one is closer to Mona, and she's leveraging her innocence to extract money from her. Anyways, I'm not going to ask her to stop helping her mom. She's an adult and knows what to do. Mom also has been reaching out to my daughters for financial help. As for me, I'm still unable to move on from the feeling of betrayal. I also have not thought about divorce yet. It's going to dent my pocket unnecessarily. Divorce would be beneficial for Mona financially and also personally if she wants to marry AP, but I'm not getting into that. She's already living in my house, and that's the maximum she can get from me. I'm out of the country and have no accountability, so whether divorced or not, it really doesn't matter to me. I'm trying to move on with my life. I'll update if anything develops. Update 3, here's what happened next. After I financially cut them off, they tried all the resources they could. My elder daughter refused to help them, but the younger one got manipulated into helping them. But she didn't earn much, she's in her first job with very little pay, which covers her basics. Despite that, she's saving some of it to help her mom. I felt proud of her. Actually, eventually, she got exhausted helping Mona. She suggested Mona get a job to sustain herself, but Mona took her for granted, saying that it was her responsibility to care for her mother in her time of need. My younger daughter did whatever she could from her little income, but when it became too much for her, she cut her off. Mona couldn't marry AP as she is still married to me, so she has been reaching out to me for a divorce. She has been threatening me with all sorts of legal consequences, but you know what? I don't care. I'm out of the country. 
I don't think she has enough knowledge or resources to sue me in a cross setup, and even if she does, there's no punishment for abandoning your cheating wife as per the law of this land. So yeah, good luck with her. The current status of Mona is that she is working at AP Shop, and I don't know what she's getting in exchange for her service, money, or dick. AP doesn't have a proper house, he lives in his camper, and he also has an ailing father to take care of, so he's also financially not strong enough to provide for Princess Mona. As far as my mother is concerned, I sometimes feel bad for disdaining her and want to help out, but she receives a pension, and that ought to be sufficient for her to survive. She brought that upon herself. I might make it up with her in the future, but not right now. Although she has mentioned that she is sorry for what she has done, it did not feel like she was genuinely sorry for her actions. Therefore, I will wait until the day when she truly regrets her mistake or when my anger subsides and my love for her takes precedence over my feelings. Some of you advised me to move on and enjoy the vibrant lifestyle of Dubai. Funny, though, it is not as hunky-dory as it looks on social media. That royal, mesmerizing lifestyle portrayed on social media is not for all, it needs money, a huge lot of money. So I'll skip that for now. Laws concerning women are also quite strict here. Also, I'm not interested in using women's bodies to get over my grief, but yes, I've been traveling a lot since then. I've been to China and Bali so far. There's a long list of other Asian countries and cultures that I'm planning to explore. Subsequently, we'll initiate a different thread to share my travel experience. Thanks for all the love and support. Now, on to the next story, story 2. I thought my wife was getting help, but she was actually cheating on me with her therapist the whole time. I don't know how to start this. I guess I'll just get right into the story so you can hear about the betrayal. This is more of a rant than anything. Still, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the woman I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. I met her at my cousin's wedding. She was the most beautiful woman in the room, and she happened to be a member of the bridal party, which made it easier for us to talk. After a few drinks, I worked up the courage to talk to her. We got to know each other, exchanging numbers, not social media, which I thought made it seem serious, and we got to know each other for the rest of the night. After that, we fell head over heels for one another. It was like I couldn't get enough of her, she filled my thoughts every day and night, and we talked on the phone every single chance we got, mostly about nothing important. It was nice. We started dating regularly, I called her my girlfriend, and after two years, my wife. We made a nice family together. Over the last few years, we had one child, a girl. Neither of us was the same after our kid, but my wife suffered from postpartum depression. It's a nasty disease that eats up the soul from what I can tell. After a few months and the second time I saw her yell at the child, my wife found the therapist. Things actually looked like they were improving for a second. My wife took the therapist's recommendations and found a hobby, therapy. She seemed to go all the time, three times a week, almost religiously. It seemed like all she did was go to therapy. Sometimes, though her care for our child skyrocketed, she wasn't paying any attention to me. She would get home, give me a peckish kiss, and then go off and play with the kid. I found out that playing with the kid was actually her sitting on her phone around our child. It seemed weird for her to lie to me, so I spied over her shoulder, but she turned and asked what I was doing. I said that she'd been distant, and we had a big fight right there in front of the kid. Once we had that fight, her phone was on lockdown. Still, dumbly, I assumed she was having some sort of mental breakdown and allowed her this space to talk with her therapist, who she now saw four times a week, once more for an additional session of exposure therapy. It's crazy because I didn't even have to look at her phone to find out the lies. I borrowed my wife's iPad on that Sunday morning in order to search Craigslist for cars. This is something that I do on a regular basis, and it was at that moment that I noticed a message from my wife's therapist appearing on the screen. Call me stupid, but I thought it was unusual for a therapist to message their clients whenever they wanted to, so I went to her gallery for some reason. I knew that TD finds something, so when I saw the picture of my wife with her therapist, I didn't throw the iPad or blow up in her face like I thought I might. The photo wasn't incriminating, but they looked too close for comfort. Alarm bells went off, sure, but these were easily ignored by the interest he had in finding out why she was so close with her therapist and whether a good therapist would take photos with their clients at all. This made me think about the messages again, and that's directly where I went. I figured out that she'd been messaging her therapist day after day for six months now. He had taken over my spot in her heart. My world went red for a while, and I couldn't focus on anything. 
I had been of a sound enough mind to take screenshots and send them to my phone, and then. I talked it over with my friend after I had calmed down for a while. He suggested that I speak to a lawyer, who suggested that I file for divorce without telling my wife. He said that this kind of thing happens all the time, and he expressed his condolences for my unfortunate fate. Shortly after that, in the days that followed, I had to fake it with my wife. It wasn't very difficult, she barely paid any attention to me. On the other hand, I was unable to sleep because I knew that she had been sleeping in another bed with a therapist and that she had not been sleeping very much. I hired a private investigator on the recommendation of my attorney. It turned out that those individuals are skilled in their work. The investigator discovered that she was staying at a nearby motel with the therapist during all of her appointments, which were four in a row. I'm not going to lie, that felt like taking an upward traveling bullet to the sternum. My attorney said that it was what he called a foolproof case. I told him that I didn't really care, I just wanted things to come to an end. It was kind of nice to watch the therapist get reported and finally be truthful about the divorce. When my wife found out that her secret man was in hot water, she called me frantically, crying and begging me to work things out because it was a mistake, that she wasn't thinking straight due to her mental disorder, and other things like that. We reported the therapist to the medical board with proof from our private investigator. I called her out on her next move. I called her parents. They were rational about the whole thing, scolding their daughter for cheating, and they immediately started from a whole state away to pick her up. Right when I asked. In the meantime, I packed all of her remaining things into her duffel bags and put them on the porch. By the time she arrived home and started her waterworks, I simply shut the door in her face and wouldn't let her come in to talk. There was nothing left to talk about. When her parents arrived a while past midnight, they found her a mess from hours of crying. So, I sent the divorce papers to make things official, and the rest is pretty much history. Court history, to be clear. I ended up suing for custody of the daughter as much as could get, my house, and no alimony. Nine months of fighting hard with a lawyer who truly believed in case proved to be pretty effective. But the thing is, now that I'm writing this, I guess that I've realized that everything happened was meant to happen. My ex-wife wasn't happy, and neither I. Now that my daughter is adjusting well in her new city, we aren't bogged down by the weight of arguments with my ex-wife, I really think that my life might start to look up from this point on. However, I don't want to be too sure about it.